My name is Dr. Lucas. I'm uh, the chair of the uh, Department of Anatomical Sciences at St. George's University. And I'm visiting uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Shane Tapps at Seattle Science, Science Foundations Foundation. And we're gonna demonstrate a little bit the right ventricle today, uh, some surgical implications and some, some important anatomical structures uh, that will be, uh, I think, extremely important for uh, medical students and also um, uh, surgeons and uh, residents in um, cardiac surgery. So we're starting with an orientation of the, of the human heart. We can see that the heart is uh, located in its anatomical position with the apex pointing to the left. You can immediately recognize the big tube, which is the aorta. Next to it will be the pulmonary uh, artery. And to the right of the aorta, we can see an interesting structure that looks like a snoopy nose, more or less encircling or touching portion of the aorta pointing towards the pulmonary uh, artery. This, this structure is called the, the uh, right atrial appendage. It's very characteristic as broad, triangular, pyramidal. We always say to our students about this characteristic snoopy nose um, appearance. So we know that this is the right side of the heart. We can see the apex, see the left side that is literally on, on the back and most of the right ventricle is composed the sternal, uh, the, the sternal surface or anterior surface of the heart. You can see a little bit of the left ventricle over here. And we're gonna make an incision that starts from the tip of the pulmonary uh, artery, coming all the way down to the apex and then a big incision that comes all the way towards the right atrium. The reason we do that is to expose without touching or destroying any of the anatomical structures and exposing the internal surface of the right ventricle. In this case, we can see clearly the portion of the right atrium. We can see the atrioventricular uh, valve, which could be the tricuspid valve, separating the right atrium from the right ventricle. And then if we lift the free parietal wall to the side, we can see the pulmonary valve. There are many classifications of how the uh, right ventricle is morphologically described. I'm just gonna mention two. One of them is, is described as the inlet uh, component, trabecular component, and, and outlet component. Some other books or some other authors is describing the sinus portion of the right ventricle and the infotibular portion of the right ventricle. But I think we know now that embryologically, the, the uh, three partitions of the right ventricle is most probably the uh, more accurate description of the heart. So we have the inlet component, the trabecular component, and the outlet component of the right ventricle. Starting from the inlet component, we can easily see the tricuspid valve with the three leaflets. We can see one leaflet up here. We can see another one there and then we can see another one on the side. So looking the heart in this real anatomical position and describing the heart in attitudinally correct nomenclature or orientation, an easy way to, for somebody to describe that uh, leaflet morphology would be that we have a leaflet that is touching the septal surface of the heart. Uh, so we're gonna call it the septal leaflet or medial uh, leaflet. Then we can see a component or of the tricuspid valve, which is this one, this leaflet, that is anterior and superior in orientation. So this will be the anterior superior leaflet. And then we're gonna see an, an, a leaflet that is really on the bottom of the tricuspid valve or on the bottom of the heart uh, or the right ventricle at this case here, that will be the inferior leaflet. So we have three leaflets. We have the anterior superior, we have the septal leaflet, and then we have the inferior leaflet. The leaflets, if you see closely, they have these telegraphic wires or small tendons that we call it in Latin corde tendine, the tendinous cords, that they will connect the leaflet all the way to those muscles that, interestingly enough, the ancient Greeks, they gave them a name as nipple looking. The Latin translation of a nipple looking uh, muscle is papillary because it's a small papilla, that means a, a small nipple. So the papillary muscles 
they connect to the leaflets of the tricuspid valve through small wires called the corda tendine or tendinous cords. Uh, the, the variations, uh, as you can imagine, of the tendinous cords and the leaflets of tricuspid valve, um, they're really a lot and they have been described very, very well to the, in, in, in the literature. And we can see now two papillary muscles here. We can see one papillary muscle, this one, that connects with tendinous cords, corte tendine, to the anterosuperior leaflet, and this one will be our anterior papillary muscle. Just beneath the anterior papillary muscle, we can see a papillary muscle that has corded tendine that connects to the septal leaflet and to the inferior leaflet, and this papillary muscle, because it's just beneath the anterior papillary muscle, will be the posterior papillary muscle. Again, the papillary muscles, they can have uh, one type of papilla, we can have two, there can be a lot of variations that we can see in this area. As you see now, the apex of the heart, or the trabecular component of the heart as we call it, has a lot of trabeculations, so they're heavily trabeculated in comparison with the left ventricle that we're going to see uh, later on, that it has very few trabeculations, so it's heavily trabeculated and continues those trabeculations that continue all the way towards the apex and to the side of the papillary muscles. A very interesting structure that we have here is the connection of this trabecular component to the papillary muscle there that is called also moderator band. The uh, more uh, accurate name will be the septum at the inferior portion of the septomarginal trabeculation. So we can see here is a, a trabeculation that starts all the way to the from the septum coming down to the papillary muscle. So it's called the septomarginal trabeculation and this portion specifically the moderator band. It was interesting the name came as a moderator band because people they believed that moderates the blood flow. Of course we know for the last maybe hundred years that doesn't moderate the blood flow but we have conduction tissue fibers from the right bundle branch passing all the way to the papillary muscle. This is extremely important structure during cardiac surgery because if we cut this moderator band we lose in conduction tissue fibers to the right side of the heart uh, to m most of the side, uh, right side of the heart and we can create severe problems. As we're moving now to the top, we can see this component here, which is called the subpulmonary infotibulum, and is this musculature that the pulmonary valve, uh, or a portion of the pulmonary valve sits, and to the side, we have the free parietal wall that the remaining of the pulmonary valve sits. So we have the pulmonary valve, that really doesn't have a, uh, a, a root um, or a ring, uh, more accurately to say, as the aortic uh, valve. Uh, we more or less have an imaginary type of ring uh, that the pulmonary valve sits, but in reality sits in a portion of the uh, subpulmonary infotibulum and parietal free, free wall. This specific area here, we're going to call it the crista supraventricularis, as you can see. And a little bit beneath, we see a very interesting septal papillary muscle. So we can have corded tendine, as you can see there, and there, and there, that they connect directly to portions of the anterosuperior and septal leaflets of the tricuspid valve. Now, this specific one, which is the highest and the thickest of the septal papillary muscles, uh, it's called the papillary muscle of the conus, or lancisi, or lusca. It's fascinating to see that the small, little, tiny papillary muscle has three, uh, three names. Now, the surgical significance of this papillary muscle is that on top of that papillary muscle, in that fashion over here, we have portions of the right bundle branch that they entering the right side of the uh, heart and descending towards the moderator band. So whenever we want to put a patch uh, in the heart or whenever we are inside the right ventricle, we're making sure that this area here is very, very well protected. And we don't want any sutures to pass through that area, that demarcating, or it's a good landmark for the demarcation of the right bundle branch.
we can see here the leaflets of the pulmonary valve and it's interesting these leaflets we can see a, a fenestration it's fairly normal that we have fenestrations in uh, some of our specimens and we can we can understand the extension of the far parietal free wall of the right ventricle we can see also the thickness of the parietal free wall and the thickness in general of the walls of the right ventricle as we can understand the pressures are very low on the right ventricle much lower than the left as a result we have um, uh, really thin walls only pathologic conditions we can see the walls of the right ventricle to be um, really thick uh, as a compensation of the heart uh, to either outflow inflow or uh, ischemic type of uh, issues Right. Yep. Hmm? Cool. Yep.